Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to talk about a couple of practice things for conceptualizing energy conservation and mathematically do it. All right. So here's our scenario. A man steps off a bridge and falls with a bungee cord attached to his leg. Um, so we're basically your normal bungee jumper kind of scenario. We're going to walk our way through it and describe the energy present in each stage. Okay. So step one. So before he steps off the bridge, what energy is there? Okay. So how we're going to do this is this. I'm going to ask a question. Kind of pause. I want you to kind of mentally answer or maybe write it down. And then um, I'll give you the answer. We'll move on to the next one. Okay. So what energy is present before he steps off the bridge? Now remember, we have three things that we can choose from. We have kinetic energy. We have gravitational potential energy. And we have elastic potential energy for three. All right. So before he steps off the bridge, what's he got? He's standing still. All right, so hopefully you said the only thing right now is your potential energy for due to gravity because the cord's not stretched, he's not moving, so that's the only thing left over is that. Now, as he falls, but before the cord begins to stretch, okay, so he's left the bridge, he's now falling, but the cord is not stretching. What's present now? All right, so we still have some potential energy gravitational, but since he's falling, he also has some kinetic energy now. Okay? But since the cord is not stretching, we don't have any elastic yet. Now, part three, we finally have the cord stretching, and it slows him down. Notice it doesn't say it stops him. It just slows him down. Okay, So what's all present here now? All right, so we take a look. We still have gravitational potential energy. Well, I hope we do. Otherwise, he hit the ground and he's dead. Um, the kinetic energy is there because even though he's slowing down, he's not stopped. And now we get some elastic potential energy also in this. What about that instantaneous point in time that he is stopped by the cord? So he's not falling down anymore. He's not moving back up yet. He is at that one point where he's stopped right before he starts to get launched back or back upwards from the bungee cord. Okay? What's all there then? All right, because he is stopped, there's no kinetic. But again, he's still going to be above the ground or our zero point. So we still have gravitational, and we definitely have a lot of elastic right now. Now remember how bungee cords work. Once he hits that point, that bungee cord is going to contract now and shoot him back upwards. So as he's accelerating back up, what's present? All right, so here again, we have all three. Because he is now moving again, we still have gravitational, and he hasn't completely um, used up all the energy from the elastic. Part six, as he's still moving up, but now slowing down. So in this case, that means the cord has now gone slack, and he no longer has any stretch to the cord, but he's still moving up. Okay, what's present here? So hopefully you said you still have that gravitational, and we still have some kinetic, because he's still moving. Now he's just slowing down. So imagine he's kind of flying upwards, and he's going to hit his peak. And that's part seven. So part seven, he stopped at the peak of his flight. Okay. If we had 100% conservation of energy here, nothing turned into heat, no wind resistance, no friction. Um, in theory, we're going to talk about where would that peak of his flight fall. Okay. But first, let's answer the question, what uh, energies are available here? Okay, so hopefully you said it was potential energy gravitational only because he's at the peak of his flight, which means he's no longer moving, okay? Now, last two questions. What would be next? And how is the energy changing during each stage? So after we get to step seven, you imagine, in theory, if he had no heat buildup, there was no deformation, there was no wind resistance, air resistance, nothing that happened there, he would go right back to where he was, Okay, so he literally would come back up and he would stop right at the point where he stepped off the bridge. Now, because of heat and other things going on that never happens, otherwise you'd fly up and bang your head against the, the platform you just jumped off of. That'd be ridiculous. Okay, so he won't get as high as his peak of flight, but what would be next would be step two. Okay, so step one and seven are identical. Then we get step two, and then three, then four, then five, then six, and seven, and it would cycle over and over again until all of these energies somehow got converted into heat energy or thermal energy or was eaten up by the friction that was mo him moving through the air and got converted into other unmeasurable types of energy. 
Now let's take a look at what was changing because knowing what's there is only part of the puzzle. The other part of the puzzle is what is actually changing here, okay? So before he sets up the bridge, there's no change, right? He's standing there. All he has is potential energy and gravitational. This is where he gets all his energy from. So that step off the bridge, that height, is all gravitational potential energy. So he's maxed out here. Now as he falls before the cord stretches, so he's falling downwards, so he's speeding up. So kinetic energy is going up, his potential energy for, for gravity is going down. As the cord stretches, he's still falling down, so his potential energy for gravitation is still going to be going down. His kinetic energy is also going to be going down, which means his elastic potential energy, which we just introduced, is now absorbing that energy, and it's going to go up. At the point that he stopped, all that kinetic energy has now been put into elastic potential energy. All the energy that we keep losing as we go down has also been put into potential energy elastic. Okay, We still have some, but since he's stopped, at this point we really aren't going to have any changes. It's just we're now maxing out the potential energy elastic, and we still have some gravitational potential energy left. Now as he accelerates back up, we reverse it a little bit. Okay, Now he's moving back up, so your gravitational potential energy should be going up. You're accelerating, so we're moving back in the position we came from, so your kinetic energy is going up, and we're losing the elastic potential energy because this is causing these two things to go back up. As he still moves up but slowing down, we've now spent all the elastic energy. The kinetic energy is decreasing, and we're converting it back into that potential energy for gravity. And finally, when he gets back to his peak, it's all back to that gravity. Okay, So we put some arrows and stuff on this. This is how it would look. We have a maximum here. This would be going down, down to its minimum point, and then back up, up, back to its maximum again. Kinetic energy would increase at first, but as soon as the cord started to stretch, it would now decrease to slow it down. The stretch would slow it down until it's got to its maximum point. Okay. It would then bring him back up, so you'd increase your kinetic energy while you're losing this, and you would be losing kinetic energy after this is gone, as it converts into this, okay? So this would be how everything changes in our energy in this scenario, okay? You are responsible for being able to do this. Now, we might not give you a bungee cord, we might give you something different, but that's the idea is can you walk your way through the process of what is changing, what is gaining, what is losing, what's minimized, what's maximized, what's even there, and what's missing during your process. So here's one example of that, okay? Now, Let's do a math side instead. So we've done a conceptual one. Let's do a mathematical one. A uh, man has a mass of 100 kilograms. He is 50 meters high on a bridge. At the bottom of the fall, the cord is going to stretch to its maximum, and he is still 3.5 meters from the water. So we've still got our, bun our, our bungee cord scenario, um, but now we're just putting some math to it. What's the elastic potential energy of the bungee cord at that point? All right. So go back to our equation. We have our initial kinetic energy, our initial potential energy, our initial elastic potential energy. Set that equal to your final potential energy from gravity, final potential energy elastic, final uh, kinetic energies. Find your zeros. Remember, cross out all your zeros, things that are not, not uh, existent at that point in time. Plug in your data for the other values and solve. Okay? So pause the video here, go ahead and work through it and try to solve it. I'll give you an answer in a second. All right, so here we go. Um, first thing I want to do is I wrote my entire equation out. Here's all my possibilities. I'm going to find some zeros, all right? So at that scenario, we're at the very bottom of the fall, okay? Um, and we started off at the very top of our fall. So at the very top, we weren't moving, so this was zero. At the very top, it was all height, so this is not zero. The very top, we weren't stretching the cord, so this is zero. At the bottom, where we were at, we weren't moving again. At one point, we were moving, but we weren't moving because the cord stretched it to the stopping point. So our velocity final was also zero. Okay, we definitely have some height left. We had th at 3.5 meters of height left, so we still have some of this, and we're looking to solve for the potential energy elastic. We don't care about spring constants or stretch of the cord, any of that kind of stuff. So we're actually solving for this. So I simplify this back into its kind of its value of being energy. Now, with that being said, we have this, we have this, and this. We simplify it. So we have our initial height equals our final height. Um, mass did not change. 
and we have our potential energy elastic. I rearranged it. It says my potential energy elastic is equal to my mass times acceleration due to gravity. It's my initial height minus my final in this case, because we're not just solving for a change here. So we end up with our initial minus our final. And we have 100. We have 9.81. We're going to make it positive here, um, because this is the energy that the elastic is, is absorbing, so it's opposing the gravity in this case. So this would be a positive number. 50 minus 3.5, and we end up getting 4.56 times 10 to the 4 joules, or 45,600 joules is what this would have had to absorb. Okay. Now, if we knew the spring constant of our bungee cord, we could solve for how long it stretched it. Natural cord. We could figure that out. Or if we knew the stretch of the cord, we also could solve for that spring constant on those bungee cords. But in this case, we didn't ask for that. We just asked for elastic energy in this case. All right. Those are two examples. Uh, you have more examples in your homework to help you with this. Thank you.